right over there. Okay, uh, it's working. So, uh, let's go ahead and zoom in. Uh, we're gonna do our normal thing. Uh, and like, oh. I think it's their momentum. Yeah, I know, right? So, uh, let's do, like, one. Uh, let's go ahead and start with our, uh, what's up? Uh, I was just wondering if you had anything to... Oh, no, just one. Yeah. So let's do, uh, where are your notes at? Right there. Here, um... Here, I'll hold them. No, 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 hold on, hold on. Act one. Uh... That's what I've got. Okay, so this is the first one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do outline. Sorry, Mike. I'm going to be behind. Gotcha. Go. Okay, so we'll kind of wait until we get, you know, people in yeah. to start doing it majorly. Uh, go ahead. And, wait, actually, let's not do that on this one. Uh... uh uh, we are talking about a major project that Normal is going to be rocking on. Uh, so, like, uh, no, we, uh, we're not doing tabletop stuff tonight. But we do have some really cool and important things to talk about that... So, the tabletop thing is my project, but we're going to be talking about Ivy's current project. Uh, give it too much importance. Uh, what do you mean? Highlighted to a project. Uh, we're going to be doing a webcomic. For those words that you uh, use, the digital evolving, evolving digital comic? Yep. That one. Wait for the party to get here. Uh, noodles. Yep. Chilling in Imperion. I got you, bud. If the name should come later, you know, let's develop stuff. Um, because our campaign, we just called it Dungeon Denizen. Right? Yeah. Uh, creativity. Um, which is neat, but like for a webcomic, it doesn't really say anything, you mm -hmm. know? Um, yeah. Uh, or like have a working name for it. You know, I guess Dungeons and Dead is a working name. Like this, right? Yes. That's, that's how what I you were planning it. on doing? That's how I do it, yeah. Okay, perfect. But it's also interesting because like I was uh, very briefly, for like all of the span of a month or so, running a blog for our camp as like all of the entries. Um, uh, where did the entries start? Uh, the entries started with a recap, one giant recap post uh, that was not as detailed as I would have liked it to have been. Um, less. Uh, and it started right after Katrina joined the party. Um, oh, yeah, that was later then. Yeah. So, most of the details of the beginning, I would say quarter of the campaign, uh, are kind of lost to the uh, annals of faulty human memory. Uh, so it's kind of interesting, because with campaigns... Hey, what's up, Love Disney? With, like, D&D campaigns, there's more of a focus as far as storytelling goes, the focus is more on like the here and now, like making uh, this singular current event feel thematic and oh, stuff like that. Uh, but like with written stories and like written comics, 
uh, the pacing is like totally different, right? And the pacing is important and that kind of thing. Um, and I think like Homestuck is kind of interesting because I follow a lot of Homestuck blogs and um, there's always this distinction between like being, uh, I forget what they call it, but like, you know, the people who read the comic as it was coming out versus what are called archive readers, which are people who only read it after the entirety was Yep. You know, and I've seen that archive readers have sometimes a very different opinion on some major events that happen in the comic. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but uh, basically the, the, the pacing is totally different when you're reading it on a, like, one panel a day, two panels a day basis compared to, uh, you know, reading it at your leisure, um, like you would a book. Mm -hmm. um, and it totally affects the, the, the experience of the story and all of that. Yeah. So, it's, that was just something. Well, if that's the case, then what are you planning to do with that specifically? Uh, I'm planning on designing it oh, wrong side. around being read, uh, the word, a la carte, <laughs> like, as it comes out. Uh, because I feel like there were some points in Homestuck that were definitely designed around, hey, we're reading this as it comes out. For example, uh, Act 5, where they introduced over 12 new characters, right? When you're reading those pages, like, 5 to 10 at a time, like, it doesn't feel like a huge influx of just data dump and information, but when when you're an archive reader, it's just like, whoa, all of this came out of nowhere with, like, very little foreshadowing, I guess? Um, that's how I felt about it when I was reading it. Um, but at the time, I didn't start reading it until the end of Act 5. Uh, Act 5 was ending, and that's when I, you know, well, the internet was exploding over it, and stuff like that. Um, but that's also why I plan to, like I mentioned, include a wiki, so to speak, right? Like a, essentially like a, an info source or a place, a part of this project that is specifically for re, like, refreshing and reminding like information that you may have forgotten. Or, you know, just because then I feel like the information is handled a little bit better. Um, yeah. My thoughts. The Network here. Elaborate for me? Uh, the video preview. Uh, hold on just a sec. Uh, let me I think check. That's, I think that's just the webpage. Oh no, we did get some dropped frames. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But let me refresh and see if it's any different. Okay, it looks like the dropped frames may... Might have uh, just been a hiccup. Yeah. I feel like it's pretty likely. Yeah, I think it was a hiccup. But it was a pretty substantial hiccup, which is kind of odd. It's like a burp. Um, sure. Internet cut out on you. Yeah, it did. It did for a second, for just a few frames for us, and we just reloaded, and everything was fine. Sorry, just falling out of my chair there. Keep the stream exciting. Um. But yeah, so I've kind of alluded to what we're sort of working on today, which is basically what I just said, a evolving digital webcomic uh, that comes with its own wiki, basically. Um, but yeah, so basically just to sort of pitch my idea to the, uh, the depths of the internet, basically my thought. Because I was a really big fan of our homestead campaign, and it's like super important to me. So I kind of want to immortalize it in a format that's easy for other people to get into it as well. 
um, because I think it's something that's worth sharing. And spending over, like I, I have spent a the the significant portion of an eight-hour road trip trying to explain just the first quarter of our campaign to my sister, who has no uh, like no context for like the Homestuck part of it. So just that alone was a little difficult difficult to explain. Um, but my goal with this is to essentially immortalize our D&D campaign in a way that's accessible for other people to also enjoy it and understand it and like appreciate the complexity and density of like information and events and like super exciting drama without having to like you know either listen to some over enthusiastic nerd ramble for eight hours or to like, struggle with it themselves the the thing about this comic is we can also do side stories like uh the thing about it is here's here's kind of another thing the way that the story is going to be done is going to be uh through an application uh you can read it online but through the application you can see uh, like animated bits or little extras, right? And uh, like essentially, was that back? Mm, no. I don't know how I want to do them, actually. I might just do them without arms, you know? Uh -huh. They could just not have arms until they need arms. Yeah. And I remember when I drew an act out plushie from you know? Like, or rather, Jude made an Act Out plushie for Reno. I drew said Act Out plushie because I rolled like a, like a twelve to make it, so it wasn't the best knack, and it was just like the best knack. So many like, it, if this is ever watched on the internet later, you know, it's gonna be the weirdest phrase, the weirdest, the best knack. <laughs> Let's actually make the nose larger. Uh, knack dolls didn't have like a really long and uh, thin snout. Yeah. Rough. That's actually kind of rough. But yeah, to kind of like further explain, basically, um, one of the key, I guess, like features of this uh, dick in the peanut butter, as it is called, um, is that basically, uh. Imagine, like, this webcomic comes prepackaged in its own application. That application also has a wiki that updates automatically, not with the latest information, but with the latest information that you, the reader, have experienced, right? So, and this is minor spoilers, but it doesn't matter. But basically, so imagine, you know, as the reader, you read that, okay, everyone has a different flaspect. Uh, Mark, Emu, the uh, Rogue of Time, Axel North, the Thief of Breath, and Jude Butler, the Maid of Space, right? So that's what you find out, and the, the wiki will automatically update that information. So if you want to go back and review, it'll show you that Jude Butler, the Maid of Space. But let's see you get later on in the story where Emil has revealed that Jude's aspect is not in fact space, but rather void. Now Jude's info page will, up, will update, but it'll treat the information that the viewer has experienced as if it is the most current information. I always find it made of space. Yeah. I always find it kind of like frustrating almost when I'm reading a wiki and it's like, warning, there are spoilers ahead. And this is like, you know, it, it's like when you're reading a, a page that you thought was totally minor that you're just like how could there be spoilers like how is this an important thing later on it like that in itself one is a spoiler and two kind of frustrating because you're like well now i can't read this page without risking spoilers having this wiki that updates with your progress as you read the comic uh basically allows you to always have the information that you know uh be available to you which is also really great because you know sometimes 
the Homestuck campaign can be really confusing and you're like, well, I don't really understand like how this is connected to this. So you can find out how things are connected without like spoiling yourself to things later. And that's kind of, you know, that was my idea. That was my main thing. Um, and what kind of spawned this, well, I've been thinking about it for a while, actually. But basically, with the recent, uh, you know, rubbing of the 5e wiki where they've removed all the information on it that's not system reference document, it's like, I love organized and easily accessible information. It's super great, I really enjoy it, um, and it's just so frustrating when, like, things are blocked off by spoilers, or, you know, it's hard to figure something out because the pages are poorly organized or categorized. Um, so hopefully, like, having this wiki that's tied directly to the comic and its progression eases those, like, frustrations. Uh, I think that's, you know, pretty well spoken. Uh, so, like, I think that what's kind of important to talk about about this is it's going to be its own application. You're going to go to your, uh, Discord library, Steam library, and you're going to pick comic. And when you, you know, when you pick it, it's going to open up a full screen application that, you know, border or uh, it'll, it'll be a window. It won't be like a borderless window or a full screen. It's just going to be the application. And in this application, you're going to get, uh, you know, the comic, which you could probably scale to any different size you want to. You're going to get an informations bar, and then you're going to get, like, uh, I'm guessing a progress bar showing where you are in relatively to where the last page is. Uh, and it, what I'm guessing the progress bar will do is it will change colors depending on the chapter. Mm -hmm. So, like, or the act, and then it'll have, like, dots for chapters, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, not super hard. Uh, your numbers down here of the page you're on, and then the info bar will have, like, uh, info bar, uh, wiki, uh, or it could just have all of the potential links to the wiki, like, mm -hmm. characters, worlds, yeah. or home, characters, worlds, uh... NPCs. Let's see, what else? Uh, items? Yeah, items or like plot threads. Uh, plot threads is harder. Yeah, it's a little abstract. Because that will purely be within the characters, I yeah, think. Yeah. Just straight up. But essentially, what if you had a Wikipedia article for something giant and constantly shifting and moving and whatnot uh, that you could open up, you know? and kind of read, and it will pull up like, okay, you know, here's the comic. It'll pull up like a page over the comic that you can click away from, and it'll close it, push it out of the way, you know? Mm -hmm. But the idea of doing like an application for it is that... Hey, what's going on, Spell? So we're talking about the next big project. Uh, for those who are wondering, we are going to be doing, uh, we're going to be starting the work on a webcomic. Um, this isn't my big project, this is something that Ivy is doing, but I'm going to be helping her out with it significantly. So right now we're kind of talking about what we're planning to do with the project. Uh, we'll probably play some games here in a bit, but for right now this is kind of like what we want to chat with you guys about is that we're going to be doing a new type of comic. It'll be hosted online. You can go to www.normalmotorcomic... Yeah, Dick and the Peanut Butter. Don't go to dickandthepeanutbutter.com. I cannot... <laughs> I cannot verify its safety. But the long and short of it is we're going to have a webcomic. But it's only... It's, it's going to be available online. Go into www.whatever.com. Um, we are going to have an application Maybe through Steam, maybe through Discord, because they're supporting indie developers, where you open up the application and you get a full application. Uh, that domain is currently available. Damn the pants, you are a much braver man than I am. 
because I would have not gone there. <laughs> I feel like dick in the peanut butter is like Probably. brand new sentence material. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I feel like it's a phrase that is not often uttered. So like uh, the the long and short is that it's going to be an application that you can open and uh, that application is going to have, uh, we've got it over here, it's going to have the comic, it's going to have an information bar where you have home, characters, worlds, NPCs, items. With this sprawling, hundreds of pages long comic, you're going to have an, a built-in wiki that you can check uh, while you're reading. You're going to have, you know, since it's an application, it's not going to rely on your web cookies. It'll save your spot for next time around. Uh, and by having it, uh, the the part of the reason that I wanted to have it as an application rather than just a webcomic is sure, you know, you can use web uh, cookies to achieve this in a small scale, but having it self-contained in a uh, in an application basically allows so that if you just want to browse the wiki for information and you're, you don't care about spoilers, you can have a reveal all toggle basically. So, you know, it just brings up all of the information that is, you know, it just fully updates to so the end of the story kind of thing. The long and short of it is as you are reading, new wiki articles show up. You only get wiki articles pertaining to what you have already read. So all of the spoilers of the story are neatly hidden away for you, and as you go further in to the game, because it's going to be a game essentially, as you go further into the game, new wiki articles pop up. And genuinely, if we did it in this format, we could do really cool shit. Like, maybe there is a stupid consort that like has a pet rock or whatever. Well, you can click on the pet rock while you're reading through, and it opens up like a little side story that you can essentially get 100% completion for the wiki. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, it will, you know, it will be... The, the idea is that we create a full world for you to kind of read the comic in, where you have all of the materials necessary, and honestly, we could probably make it to where people could add to the wiki, like... Like a Wikipedia article, you know? Mm. That might be a little difficult, though, if it's a self contained application. Mm hmm. Yeah. Right. In time. In time, in time. Yeah. What I like is that, like, you can go really small scale. You can just have a webcomic with an interactive wiki, and that's pretty, that's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward, it's pretty easy to achieve. But then, like, you know, as we get those basics down, we can expand to do more interesting things. We can add the progress bar, we can add an info bar that updates as you're scrolling through, you know, and and just get really complex by making everything more streamlined, you know, in a way. So. Uh, what I like is the idea that you can have your progress bar, and like, at a certain point of getting through the comic, a new thing pops up that you can click on, and it's a side story that doesn't really have an important place in the story or whatever, that you all of a sudden are watching a story about this consort and its pet rock, mm -hmm. you know, and it has nothing to do with the story, you can read it at any point or not read it, and you don't lose information relative to the plot, but it's just like extra little tidbits that we can even throw in retroactively. Yeah. Uh, and the progress bar would enable us to do it however we felt like. You can immediately jump, you know, mm -hmm. to different locations. I mean, I would probably have it to where there's a button to unlock the progress bar, so you can't go farther initially than you've already read. Yeah. But if you have somehow, like, if you're reinstalling and you your computer doesn't have the information saved because it was an older computer, you can unlock the progress bar and go to where you left off, and then lock it again, and where you are currently at, everything beneath it locks, while everything above it you can go back and read at your heart, heart's content. But you don't accidentally spoil yourself trying to figure out where you left off before the reinstall, or maybe Windows got nuked and you had to reinstall all your games and it didn't save in your uh, app data because that's where most of this shit's saved. Because that like never happens to anybody ever, right, B? Yeah, like, especially not three anything. times, yeah. you know? Yeah. But like, uh, the, the main thing is, this is kind of like a project that we're going to hopefully be working on in the future, uh, setting time aside for. We might even be drawing the webcomic, like, in some of the streams. Like, I'll admit, I am super... Uh, rusty. Rusty with uh, digital artwork. But, uh... What is that face? 
I don't know, that was a stupid face. It's been months since I have messed with it because my older versions of Windows, they were uh, custom. Like the way that all the files were stored and everything, I had essentially programmed it to do it a certain way. And for some reason, the uh, all of Wacom's data uh, required you to have a it required you to have base Windows setups to use. So my computer couldn't use a Wacom tablet for like five years because all of my setups had this uh, unique uh, method of file storage. So I haven't done digital artwork in about that long, and I am super fucking rusty with it. But I hope to be getting back to it, and. Uh, you know, it's something that I'm really looking forward to. And that's something that Ivy's been talking about for a long time, so, you know. It just, it's definitely something I want to try my hand at, and it would kind of go with the direction that I'm wanting to take normal mode, where we don't just do, like, joking around and having a good time and playing games, but we actually do, like, these really unique things, these niche things, uh, you know. It's, it's something that I would definitely like to try. And now that I've finished with my fucking degree, thank God, I have time to do this type of thing. So yeah, I mean, you guys wouldn't see like 100% of the comics creation because, uh, you know. Spoilers. Well, not just spoilers, <laughs> but like, these things take time, so we need to do them as quick as possible, not just in kind of the four hour gap that we generally host normal mode each and every day. But like, you guys still see a large portion of the process. Yeah. Okay, just, like the design behind it. Yep, like, yep. How we do the the comics. Uh, uh, let's see. Do we have any other things that we'd like to kind of add on? Like, we have our our chapter set up. Let's actually do that real quick. Oh, right, right, right. Merge that down. Okay. There we go. And then, uh... The way that, yeah, I've, I've kind of already explained how I want the progress part to work. But the next thing is we plan on making the actual pieces of the page, uh, they will appear. Let's actually move over here. So, three, presentation. You're reading a webcomic, and as you read, only one box pops up. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. So like only one box pops up, right? It looks like a silhouette or something, and you click on it, and then it's going to pull open a new page. I don't know if any of you have ever uh, looked into Overwatch's, uh, the way they do their webcomics, but theirs is a lot more like flash intensive, I think, because the, essentially the next panels will slide in so that you don't see the future panels be before, you know, you actually get to reading them. Uh, which is sometimes not necessarily a problem, but one of the, like, caveats or faults of the traditional manga or comic style, where just the entire thing is one big image and, you know. But it also helps readability and the, you know, uh, ease of understanding because sometimes uh, people who aren't familiar with comics or how they work they're like what order do I read the boxes in you know especially if uh, it is um, if it's a traditional Japanese manga they're read in reverse and people get confused by that so having the boxes slide in as you read them uh, really makes it clear and intuitive how you know things are meant to be read and stuff like that uh, so but yeah, the idea is that it, like, everything transitions to the next part that you're supposed to be reading. Uh, so, like, when you are reading it, uh... 
and then it would go down to there would be like a little animation of hey go to the next page yeah as like the arrow this arrow doesn't appear unless you fully read this page or like maybe it, it's there but an animation goes over it when you've officially done all of the interactions that you could do for that page yep. and it tells you okay you can go to the next page now uh you have examined everything really um but yeah it's just like that kind of thing uh -huh. Actually, that's a really fucked up neck. But yeah. The, the idea is just like... We want to create a... Uh, you know, this this type of program mm -hmm. that will hold all of your comic inside of it and like it's gonna be something new. And a lot of people will probably be like, ugh, I have to download something to read a comic? No, you don't. We're going to have it on the internet too. It just won't have all the flashy animations or all the cool functions or anything like that because you know. That's hard. <laughs> well, it's not that it's hard, it's just that, like, why would we fucking make yeah, all these... Yeah, it's not the main focus yeah, of the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The main focus of the project is having this cool, like, uh, interactive experience. Not just click. Yeah. Click, you know. So, I don't know, I just think that, uh, you know, I wanted to share it with you guys first. Oh, and also just kind of, like, you know consider more about it and whatnot. But like, the main issue with this is mostly just like, making the uh, comic itself. Yeah. And the program that's just gonna sit inside. Yeah. It's gonna be a lot of work. But, it'll be interesting nonetheless. So with that, I think we'll go ahead and stop talking about this. We could play a video game or something. What do you okay. think? Sure. Do you wanna play? Hat in Time? Mm, you could do Hat in Time. Or you could do Apex some more if you're still feeling, uh, feeling that. Championship. Yeah, uh, so I didn't get a single win on stream yesterday, and then the last game I played, that was like, yeah, I'll play, like, one more game and then go to bed. Uh, the last one I played, I just fucking destroyed. Yeah. I didn't even go down. We got, uh, an easy win, and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I can't do this shit while I'm no, okay, to be fair, yesterday, uh, I was, like, hanging out with those randos, because they had asked if I wanted to do it with them, and I was like, you know what, he's new to the game, yeah, sure, I'll play with him a little bit, help him out. Maybe dab him a win, and then we didn't get anything out of it, and I was like, ah, that's unfortunate. But at least everybody had fun. Ugh. Anyways, uh, yeah, I think, uh, time to go ahead and get started on that sort of thing. Let's do some Apex. Alright. Alright, uh, we're gonna save this as... Oh, that sounded so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... So this is, uh, uh, outline. Okay. We've got that saved. Let's go ahead and get Photoshop done there. And we're gonna go ahead and pull up some Apex. Oh wait, I don't even have Origin open, what's this? Oh, hey, it shows what the tablet's charge is, because we've got Bluetooth. Not Bluetooth. Uh, wireless. Wireless. Isn't that Bluetooth? No, not necessarily. Gotcha. The fuck is the origin? Okay. We will eventually get to this, guys. That's 
some point. In the meantime, I'm just kind of cleaning up stuff, to be honest. Okay, do you want to go ahead and uh, bring your laptop in here? Oh, am I playing too? Uh, are you? Uh, no, I'll be good. Are okay, you... well, will you change our title then? Yes. You rock. Okay. What's up, bro?